with toppings for ice cream and yogurt. Next, he hit the market with sugar-coated sour licorice, followed by super sour bubble gum, hitting the jackpot with kids hungry for kicks. What could be more obvious than the fact that kids love candy, but the ticket to success here was clearly outrageous candy, that kids would buy not only to titillate their taste buds, but make a social statement, a statement of independence from parents, a bravado to their peers. Sherman's creation, designed to help kids foam at the mouth fluorescently, took off like a rocket. Grabby graphics, and what a mouthful for a name. Mad Dog Super Spew Bubble Chew. <laughs> it's them. They love it. It's, they come in, take it all, that's all they buy. Just the disgusting stuff, nothing more. It's, it's not disgusting. It's, it's fun. You can have fun with your friends with it. It's not like just normal stuff where you just chew it or eat it. I like to buy stuff that, you know, my parents don't want me to buy, and it tastes good and it's fun. Having made his mark, Sherman pressed on, creating, are you ready for this, edible slime. And now I was thinking to myself, what would make it work? What would make it sell? What's the hook? And uh, I remember as a kid, we used to do some That's gross true. stuff and with our noses and say, you think it's candy, but it's snot. I figured this stuff would be great. It looked just like snot. And then uh, I figured, it wouldn't sell in a tube. That's the easy way to do it. We're going to have to, to put it in a nose-like object, something of this nature, and have it drip out to really give it the hook to sell, to, to make it right. Admittedly, it's a walk on the wild side. But at more than $10 million a year and rising, the How Can It Be So Sour company is singing How Sweet It Is, all the way to the bank. In Covina, California, Bruce Page, First Business. Just look at the world around you, right here on the ocean floor. Such wonderful things around you, what more are you looking for? You get the impression from this movie classic that life is a lot happier under the sea. And maybe it is, but whatever the case, whatever our age, we're all fascinated by our finny friends. Such fascination is the foundation of an up-and-coming industry moving like a tide across America. It is a new twist on the aquarium business, where enterprising vendors come to your office, sell or lease you a tank and equipment, install your choice of fish, and maintain it all regularly thereafter. The entrepreneur in this case did an about-face from a very calculating career and never looked back. I was a controller for a company in San Francisco, a restaurant company. And then I did that for about five years and then was about to turn 30. And I thought either I'm going to do, you know, be an accountant forever or dive into something different. Dive he did, but fish and diving were, after all, his hobbies. The real challenge was to turn it into a thriving business. Doctors, dentists, attorneys, restaurants are primarily his market, but it takes salesmanship to crack it open. I sell them just on the beauty of it. Basically, we provide everything from design you know, from uh, blueprints all the way to service and installation. And we also, you know, like even go as far as renting out the fish if they don't care to buy them. So <laughs> that's a, a big part of the business too. With user-friendly being the watchword for the 90s, perhaps it's not surprising that businesses would make fish the pet of choice to help customers and employees feel at ease. Government statistics show they're the third most popular pet and the first two, dogs and cats, are clearly not so easy to manage in an office environment. The tank has had a really good effect on the office. The mothers like to come in and it calms them down and it's a soothing thing. They can do something besides read. They enjoy looking at the fish. The children really like it. They come in and they look at the, the new additions to the fish tank. Just what the doctor ordered, of course. Expanding through franchising is Omar's next major challenge. He readily admits it wasn't an easy business to get off the ground, but he learned a lot of lessons that'll pay off as he expands. And oh, by the way, does he have any regrets about leaving accounting? None. <laughs> None. In Irvine, California, Bruce Page, First Business.
It is a jungle out there, so if you want your product to get media and public attention, you'd better dream up something to make it stand out, be remembered. All the more difficult a challenge when the product is something from Hollywood, where everything already seems to be screaming for you to see and to buy. Enter Secret Identity, a Hollywood boutique of promotional wizards who have a superb track record of getting a message out and registered. Secret Identity's humble beginnings were in promoting TV shows, but in just eight years it has become the promotional premium king of the hill for the movie and record industry as well. But the road up that hill from a startup of less than $1,000 to revenues of more than $5 million a year has been anything but easy. Well, it would have been nice to start out with um, quite a bit more money, uh, if we could have. But they always say, and I've read this many times, that uh, a lot of times when new ventures are started with a lot of money, money is squandered. We had to actually go through it the tough way, but we weren't, um, weren't getting ourselves in hawk along the way. We just had to take one receivable, use it to make a payable uh, type payment, and uh, that, was, that was a hurdle we had to overcome, but it did teach us that we could stand on our own two feet. Using novelties to break the ice with media and consumers is not new, but it's the unique creativity and packaging that has made Secret Identity a leader of the pack. We either listen to music, we read scripts, we go to screenings, we then have a group of people here who, are, who comprise our creative development department, and they analyze and come up with 20 or 30 suitable options for the perfect targeting of our products in their marketing mix. Uh, a lot of uh, companies have come our way because there is no upfront charge. There's no concession they have to make to us except allow us to know about their product. Uh, and we've been able to add an element of freshness to, to an otherwise um, more static industry. Competitors now, there are many. But with expansion into other markets beyond our shores internationally, Secret Identity has become a powerhouse for promotion, anything but secret. In Hollywood, California, Bruce Page, First Business. Consider this the crossroads of the world when it comes to anything electronic or even related to such a product. It's where manufacturers showcase and sell their latest creations to distributors and retailers. What they buy is what you'll buy, hopefully, in the months ahead. At retail, this is now a $50 billion a year industry, an ever-growing gold mine of sorts that inspires more and more players to stake their claim in it. Our, our growth in sales is being fueled by the fact that dad and the kids don't want to compete for the TV anymore, so you buy another TV or you get a computer or you get some different software. So, you know, one out of four families bought a TV set last year. That's a huge number, considering it's a mature category. Um, the products are, are just going off the shelves. We had a terrific Christmas selling season, and we expect a great year. What's arguably generating the most excitement at this year's show is the promise in April of more TV program choices than most people have ever had or could imagine, made possible by advances in both digital and satellite technology. Buy a pizza-sized dish like this for just about $700, and you've truly got a window on the world few will want to be without. Well, the system is called DSS, Digital Satellite System. It's a new high-power satellite that will be broadcasting over 150 channels to every household in America that chooses to receive it. And you'll be able to receive basically everything you receive on television today in far better picture quality, with better choice, convenience, and, uh, and much more reliability. More choices now available, too, in better viewing. TV sets that offer wider screens. And if that's not enough to stir you to trade in and scale up, well, there's more on the horizon. Look for this high-resolution, ultra-slim TV to hit the market soon. And why would you want it? Maybe a TV on the wall, a TV in your kitchen that doesn't take up the counter space, a uh, TV in your bathroom, uh, or a small uh, wall-hung TV. There are a lot of applications, uh, both in the house and outside the house. Like in your van, perhaps. Why not have all the comforts of home therein as you travel or take a break? Another variation on an old theme also generated a lot of interest here, revolving around security.
products to better protect you and what you own. More about that in our next report. In Las Vegas, Bruce Page, First Business. Popular spot at this year's show is the booth for what the promoter calls his vehicle defense machine. Technology sources demo on video made it clear why noise alarms are no longer necessary. Take a fancy car parked on a street on a dark night. Enter a car thief ready to go to work. A break in, perhaps, but no getaway. No way to see, even if he could start the car. The dense smoke generated is actually odorless, stainless, and non-toxic. As you might expect, necessity was the mother of this invention.